feel rejected when they ask questions, then they will be conditioned to uh, stop asking questions. You know, if every time I ask a question, they're like, how could you not know this, you know, whatever. And then like, let's say I got that kind of response. I would be like, form the neural pathways in my mind. When I ask, my consequences, I get verbally bashed. Therefore, equals don't ask. on the marriage side and how do you balance that relationship in your marriage and, and that's including date nights we implemented a system okay well we we got to have um date nights and we got to have uh, uh so we we implemented a thursday morning uh, breakfast date so thursday mornings we get a babysitter we we uh chat about things because we found that um as work got busy as uh, errands got busy we would like go through days without like really talking. We'd be like, hi, and then, oh, food's good, or where's dinner, or whatever, and then we'd sleep, right? And we wouldn't really f talk to each other. Oh, how's your week going? You know, how's this, how's this, how's this? We wouldn't have a chance to talk. So we implement Thursday mornings. But I, I find that Thursday mornings is just a supplement. It's not uh, the entree. You need the entree. You need your meals. You need to be uh, regularly communicating. It's just like working out once a week. It, it, it sort of really doesn't really maintain you. It might maybe psychologically, you think it's a good start, but it's mm -hmm. the bare minimum. Yeah. And it's not sustainable. You need to have more than once a week. You need to be communicating uh, several times during the week. You need to find time at different stages you you have to implement different strategies when you have when we had one child it's a little bit different when we have two children it's a bit different obviously when a couple has three children it's going to be a little bit different as well so we you know right now we have two children and uh, the day nights are good thursdays uh, thursday morning but i think it's still it's still not enough. So now we're like, okay, let's put the kids early to sleep so that we have a couple hours to ourselves to talk, you know, and then, um, yeah, that, that helps as well. Yeah. So that's really great. I really like that, um, that you guys actually have a simple date night. And a lot of people think it's very complex to have a date, like Thursday morning, having lunch together or in the morning or in, at night or having dinner or do things together. I think it's not always about bringing the uh, roses home all the time. It's mm -hmm. all about spending quality time. And all, I understand that, you know, maybe your five language love is might be different than your wife, right? Mm -hmm. First day. And she might be more qualified in the quality of time so she values more of the time and you guys and you are more on the physical touch so you like hugs and mm -hmm. kiss and and things like that and maybe words of encouragement as well mm -hmm. everyone's different but i wanted to know how do you guys make it work and how do you understand based on what the scoring system how did you interpret that information so in terms of quality time, um, I thought, okay, if we just do the Thursday morning lunches uh, uh, or brunches, that would be good. And then at, earlier in our marriage, uh, I had I, I said to my wife, I was going to love her and treat her better than how I treated all of my ex-girlfriends, you know, combined, you know. So I was going to do monthly anniversary, not yearly anniversary. So I've been, to this day, I think uh, we're at, we just finished our 85-month anniversary. Congratulations. So uh, every, uh, and then our, our wedding was uh, on October 10th. So every 10th, we'd be like, like I would remind her, oh, it's our 85 month anniversary or something. And then in the beginning, she would be like, oh, yeah, that's nice. But, and, um, and I would implement this tradition, this, this tradition of, okay, every month, let's get each other gifts or whatever. Well, I, I wouldn't expect any gifts from her, but I would try to make an effort to, do something special. But I realized she um, pretty soon that gifts was not her love language. But I thought, okay, even though I, I got her a gift, but we had some quality time, but I realized that it's like tradition, like ritualistic, religious, not, I wasn't very present in a specific date. She wanted me to just be regularly there. 
Um, it does. It wasn't a set amount of time. It wasn't like, okay, give me two hours every day or whatever. It was more like for that 30 seconds or that 30 minutes I need you, I just want you to be present. She didn't have to, she didn't say it because many couples, many women, uh, uh, could be men, but they, they don't know what, what they want, what they need. And it was kind of like my job to find out like it's it's well it's like hey well, i gave you your 30 minutes i gave you your two hours like how come you're not how come you're not satisfied with the quality of time but for her it was more like the connection that isn't like whether it's five minutes or one hour if i was one hour with if i was um out with her for like two hours but if i wasn't present and um present doesn't mean i'm not on my phone or whatever but present means really being connected to her at that time like uh, eye contact thinking about what's going on at, rather than daydreaming and so you know obviously when you have your quality time with your couple your your wife or husband you don't want to be on the phone and texting and all that stuff mm -hmm. but regardless even if i wasn't texting or on the on the phone or anything just being there wasn't enough. It, she had to feel that you were there. Like I, I, she had to feel that. Oh, okay, Gary is present. You know, he really cares about what we're currently doing. Whether it's walking in the park or, uh, you know, going to have ice cream. Right. It, we, she, she had to feel that Gary's involved. He he's not daydreaming. You know, he's really in the moment. And I think now I've come to we've come to a different uh, the stage in our marriage where it's like. It's not necessarily about the time, like, oh, okay, well, let's do this, implement a one hour per day, blah, blah, blah. It's not like that. It's like when she is talking to me, be present. And it's something that is, something lacks. It's something that lacks in this culture because everybody's taught to multitask. Okay, while you're talking on the phone, uh, you know, texting, checking the internet, watching TV, listening to music, all at the same time, like we're, t we're kind of, a condition to be a multitasker, you know, and at work, most of the time in the corporate world, they're like, oh, you know, why are you doing things one at a time? You should be doing them all at the same time and doing it well, right? Mm -hmm. And even as entrepreneurs, we're, we're taught to be, you know, you got to do everything at the same time. And I, I realized with my wife, it's just about quality as opposed to quantity. So hence the, when I say quality, it's not, so when, five level language it says quality time it's not qu quantity time it's mm -hmm. quality so and what does that quality mean so for my wife it means being present really connecting because you know women are very emotional beings uh, also men too but you have to be able to get the the woman to feel that you're there and you really care and because even if you don't say anything or even if you say very little but they have to be able to look into your eyes and feel that oh you know gary doesn't really know anything but he cares <laughs> you know or you know, he he doesn't have words to say but he cares mm -hmm. so it's all about that I, I i think i think that you had a great point regarding about it's not about only how many times that you hang out with each other because you cannot be present and and she would actually feel that certain energy uh physically and emotionally mm -hmm. especially emotionally she, you're looking somewhere else and she's here and she's not on the phone and you're on the phone and she doesn't understand what's going on and why are you here you feel like i'm she doesn't feel wanted yeah and most women want to be cherished mm -hmm. and uh men wants to be respected and the only way that you get respected if you cherish her in order to get respect in a relationship so when i think about being present it's um it's really when i say about okay like some people might say oh what does it mean to be present gary well um you know think about what is your uh what is your partner thinking about what are they uh what do they need at this point what how can i serve them right and then so a lot of times my wife is carrying all these groceries and stuff like that or carrying these bags and carrying all the the, the baby stuff and she's wondering why isn't gary helping why isn't he helping me to carry stuff like, but I'm kind of like, why don't you ask me? But if I was really present and thinking, how can I serve her? How can I um, add value to her? How can I make her feel uh, loved, right? It's more of like, okay, 
maybe she needs help with the bags. Maybe I can offer to, you know, offer to carry the bags. Offer, oh, are you cold? You know, or, or, can I help you with that? Can I do this for you? Can I, you know, it's all about seeing how you can serve the person. I think that's uh, something that you need to, like men need to train themselves in. Because they are often they know how to take orders, but often they're not able. Uh, some of them aren't able to proactively ask, "How can I help you? Or, or, is everything okay? How can I help you here? Are you tired? Are you like this? Are you that? Can I help you with this? Can I help?" That's that's actually being proactively present as opposed to reactively present. I really like when you say that, and the reason why I like it because it's, it eliminates assumption. And when you assume things, it's actually quite dangerous in a relationship because your partner can't read each other's mind. And that's not supposed to be a form yeah. of communication. Yeah. That's considered being neglecting in mm -hmm. the communication um, overall and in general. So it's really key is if you don't know anything regarding about your partner, you can always ask. Mm -hmm. There's always a certain pattern that you actually would be able to see logically and you already know that she already needs help with the grocery when she comes mm. home. So automatically, when you ask and you keep asking that same question, guess what? Now you logically see it. You see the same pattern over and over. Mm. And almost then you can go, okay, she needs help. Right? You know, I think men just need to be taught. You know, we, we need to, like, I'm not saying women don't need to be taught, but men need to be taught how to do things, right? And, and I think in a man and in a marriage, you have to learn in a relationship, both, you're not going to marry someone who's exactly, or you're not going to date anybody who's exactly like you. You have to ask and teach each other things, right? So you have to be, you have to have a coachable spirit. You have to be coachable. You have to be willing to learn, willing to accept mistakes and be willing to try things out you know by you asking the woman you're kind of being humble like hey i don't know i'm clueless uh but hey do you need help like she might be like duh i need help you know but after you do it for a while it becomes second nature and you've conditioned to oh she's carrying a bunch of stuff help her you you can condition yourself to develop that that kind of uh, habit and not feel ashamed asking. Um, I think a lot of men has that fear of asking mm -hmm. questions or looking stupid or uh, below the knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. But it actually saves you so much pain and grace um, on that aspect. And when you ask question, and I think it's more important in the, the communication with a partner, oh, yeah. don't make them look stupid or dumb or yeah. whatever that it is. Even for example, if I'm in the relationship and my boyfriend doesn't know how to fold bed sheets or t-shirts and I can't automatically look at him and be like, how could you not know how to do that? <laughs> How could you not know this? I think it's more important learning how um, to actually teach somebody without cluing in that they're dumb. And I mm -hmm. think that's really key in a relationship. Have a neutral communication and not be reactive in, in questions per se. Yeah, it's all about the attitude. Um, you know, the, the person asking the questions, obviously in a humble position. And the person being the teacher has got to, teach them properly, not like, a oh, duh, you should know this, right? They should be, wow, my, my partner is humble enough to ask me, right? It's an opportunity for us to learn together. And, you know, if they are conditioned to feel rejected when they ask questions, then they will be conditioned to uh, stop asking questions. You know, if every time I ask a question, they're like, how could you not know this, you know, whatever. And then, like, let's say, I got that kind of response. I would be like, form the neural pathways in my mind. When I ask, my consequences, I get verbally bashed. Therefore, equals don't ask. And then that doesn't help anybody, right? So then um, it's, it's important to form the right neural pathways. And then uh, obviously, I know it's so much easier said than done. And that's why I say, whenever we form a foundation, there's always gaps and you always got to revise and tweak it and we always make mistakes and we got to keep practicing it until it's second nature. But when I say second nature, it's not like perfect because people change and new situations come and you got to keep tweaking it. Yes. Um, I, I always I think every like people 
can come across as experts. Oh, I have the knowledge, I have this, I know this, I know that. But at the end of the day, it's not about what you know, it's about what you do. And, uh, you know, I, I always tell people it's like this. Um, I've, I've read this quote a long time ago. Be careful of your thoughts because your thoughts become words. Be yes. careful of your words words because your words become action careful of your actions because your actions will become your destiny and then i see before you know uh, what to say you have to know inside before you do something before you take action you have to have right words for you right words you have to know it inside your, your thoughts so it's not like like people have the thoughts and then they have the words and then the hardest part is to get from words to action and then they look at the words and they go, oh, yeah, you're just all talk. No, no, you're not walking the talk. You're such a hypocrite. Well, it's part of the stage. <laughs> you have to go to the words first and then go to the action. It's not like all of a sudden you have action. It, it came from somewhere. So uh, it's always a progress, a process. And I, I think, um, you know, it's always about training yourself and developing it, uh, talk all like talk is good is the first step, but it's not the, it doesn't translate into anything if it stays as just talk or knowledge. No, and you made a really good point about, you know, your thought is, is actually affects who you are as a character. And it comes mm -hmm. from the head. You know, if you're unhappy, they say change not your external world, but change your internal world. Exactly, exactly. Right? And mm -hmm. I, in my program, I teach men how to do good to feel good. Yeah. And I teach women how to feel good, to do good. And so that's part of my program that I teach for high executives and CEOs in general, mm -hmm. men or women. Yeah. And they get that concept right away because women are more feeling-based than men. But when, when men do really well, and I think you can touch base on this um, you know, from your experience, when men want to make women happy by doing things for her, he wants to do it to make her happy than anything yeah. else. He doesn't want to do it out of his own pride or ego. Mm -hmm. The time. I think uh, in the, the book, Five Love Languages, you like, let's say you do something. You, you do it anyways until you, your, your internal mind likes it. Because if you keep doing, like uh, they go, say your relationship, let's say the woman hates the husband for some reason. But if the woman just keeps doing actions that like i think the book talks about if you want to like oh like they shared a story the woman like doesn't like the husband and just lost all this love for him and all this stuff and then uh, i think dr chapman was saying well just do actions of love as if you as if you did love him and she's like what how, how how does that work and then he just said just do it so she just kept doing actions like i think uh, like 10 actions or something 10 actions as if she did love him. And then Dr. Chapman would give the same task to the husband because the husband also didn't love the, the wife. And then the, Dr. Chapman would say to the husband, well, do five actions for your wife that as if you did love her. And then so they both kept doing it. And, and Dr. Chapman said, no matter what, never stop doing those actions. So they kept doing those actions. Uh, in the beginning, they're just faking it or pretending or whatever. But sooner or later, the mind was saying, like, this is, this is whack, right? You know, yeah. I, I, I hate this person, but I keep doing stuff that shows love to this person. Yeah. Something's got to change. Either I stop doing the action or I change what, how I feel about that person. But if they keep doing the action, the internal is forced to change. You kind of condition your brain to love that person. So the, that principle I learned. No, that's a great uh, neuroplasty. Um, I'm also studying that area as well about the brain chemical and the mm -hmm. brain nervous system. And they say it takes about eight weeks to soft wire the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's conditioning yourself. Yeah. So if you repeat it no matter what within the eight weeks period, then you're actually soft wiring your neuroplasty brain and you actually create that chemical, a dopamine, which I actually teach in my program, mm -hmm. and it makes you happy. So um, what you're saying is actually applying to Dr. Chapman's uh, work as well. And so if you want a little to learn more about my information or my program, you can always visit me at cindyvking.com. And Remember to hit subscribe button and like <laughs> and share because sharing is caring. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends because sharing is caring. There is three things that you can do right now. You can subscribe to my newsletter, see the link below. When you're at there, go ahead, hit the like button, and remember to subscribe because I post new social media and video every week. If you have an idea for a video, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.